Prozac, Zoloft, Lexapro. The selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or the SSRIs, are the nearly ubiquitous psychiatric drugs that are so commonly prescribed as to become household names. If you've gone over even a handful of psychiatric pathology videos, chances are you'll have seen the SSRIs pop up as a first line more than once. They're prescribed for everything from depression to premature ejaculation, and because patients on these meds taken for years, if not for life, they're also some of the most profitable drugs, for the pharmaceutical companies anyway. Today we're going to take a deep dive into the pharmacology of the drugs that make up the bread and butter of psych pharmacology, the SSRIs. To understand how the SSRIs work, you've got to understand the action of the monoamine synapse. This is the one that governs the signal transmission in pretty much every CNS neuron that uses dopamine, norepinephrine, or serotonin. The neurotransmitters are made way up in the cell bodies and shipped down the axon, eventually docking the axon terminus by the plasma membrane. When the neuron fires an action potential, the vesicle fuses with the membrane and releases this neurotransmitter, activating the postsynaptic receptor and triggering whatever downstream effects that causes. But each individual monoamine binds to the receptor only transiently, then detaches from the receptor, where a reuptake channel busily works at clearing the neurotransmitter from the synapse. Now, it may seem like a completely counterproductive mechanism, and I get that. But the important thing to realize is that since neurotransmitter receptor binding is only transient, the only way for the receptor to generate a continuous signal is for enough neurotransmitter to be present at the synapse that once one neurotransmitter unbinds, another takes its place. And it's the dynamic balance between vesicle release and reuptake channel activity that dictates the amount of neurotransmitter present in the synapse at any given time. The SSRIs go by a lot of different names, but all of them work by inhibiting serotonin reuptake, tipping the balance in favor of increased synaptic concentration of serotonin. You probably guessed that from the name, and part of what makes these drugs different from the other antidepressants is that they're selective, meaning almost no effect on other monoamines like dopamine or norepinephrine. You'll see why this is important in a moment. So you guys should have some idea by now. What psychiatric disorders are the SSRIs used for? These guys are the first-line pharmacotherapy for major depressive disorder, pretty much also the first line in any anxiety spectrum disorder, although the SNRIs are tied for first place in a lot of cases, and are actually also used for bulimia and binge eating disorder as well. Bad news is, they can take about 48 weeks to become fully effective, so if you hear someone saying they quote-unquote need a Prozac to deal with life right now, man, you better hope it's a bunch of Prozac and that their life is still going to be hard a month from now. As for all the psych drugs, one of the toughest initial hurdles is to remember the names. There's a lot of them, and there's no real simple common suffix or theme in all the SSRI names. The only helpful thing is that fluvoxamine and fluoxetine sound pretty similar, as do citalopram and escitalopram. Don't worry, if you do enough questions, I think you'll learn to recognize these on site. If not, you may just have to flashcard them. Now, the reason these drugs are so popular isn't because they're the most effective drugs. It's because their side effect profile is so favorable. They're not prone to abuse, and the therapeutic dose is really high, so toxicity from overdose is rare. The most common side effects are sexual dysfunction, drowsiness, and mild weight gain. Of these, sexual dysfunction is usually the most problematic side effect for patients, <laughs> and some enterprising doctors even use it off-label for premature ejaculation. Like most of the antidepressants, SSRIs can contribute to the development of serotonin syndrome. We can read about more in the section on psychiatric emergencies. And if given in isolation to bipolar patients, this can actually result in rebound mania, which nobody wants. Finally, and weirdly enough, SSRIs have been associated with a pretty significant increase in thoughts of suicide, although it's not clear that this actually results in more suicide completions. Weird in a drug that's used to treat depression, but there you go. Well, that's all I got for SSRIs. Stay tuned for more talks and antidepressants, and don't forget to hit that thumbs up button down below.